You know what I miss? Going, going to, to the, the Mariners. Mariners. But it was a little bit exciting because, like, at the very end there, we had, like, this little... We had a chance to make it to the playoffs. Not that we did. But there's still baseball going on, so that's... Okay, okay, okay. We need to get to the math. But, but we are talking about math because baseball has so much math. Okay, on-base percentage, slugging percentage. Okay, how about the distance from home play to the pitcher's mound? How about how okay. far the pitcher's mound? We have to do some factoring. Okay, fine. She's out of here. She's out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Factoring quadratic expressions. We are converting from standard form to factored form. Those are things we're going to talk about more later on, but I want you to just start getting familiar with the vocabulary. So we have ax squared plus bx plus c. I want you to know that if we're ever factoring something that's a plus and a plus like that in the trinomial, then we are going to factor into two binomials with plus and plus. So that's pretty easy to remember, plus and plus, plus and plus. But then from there, let's talk about the method that we're going to use. We're going to use a crisscross method. It came from a Korean method that I looked up after a student showed me. It's so cool. So let's go ahead and go through it. We look at the coefficient of x squared, and it's a 1. Well, the only way I can get a 1 is by 1x times 1x. Then I want to look at factors of 20, and of course I'm trying to get 9 in the middle. Well, this is a little bit easy because we're looking for something that multiplies to be that c value, which is the 20, but adds to be the b value, which is the 9. So of course I could go through and do 2 times 10, and that's 12. That's not what we want. So I think we can go ahead and go straight there. We're going to go to 4 times 5. But look at how we check it in this crisscross method. I multiply across, I get a 4, multiply across, get a 5, and then simply add it up. Did I get 9 like I wanted in the middle? Check. I did. So this is correct. Now here's the most important thing because we have the right answer, but we have to write it in the correct form. This creates our two factors straight across. We checked it crisscross, but that's not how we write the final answer. So we go x plus 4 and x plus 5. Okay, starting to get the hang of it. Let's look at the next one. Yikes, 144 factors of 144, and I have to get 51? Alrighty, I can do it. 1x, 1x. Thank goodness that coefficient is a 1 in front. But now I have to think of factors of 144. Hmm. Well, I know it's divisible by 2, 2 times 72, but that won't add to 51. I, I don't even need to write that one down to check that one. Hmm, what about a 3? Do you remember the quick way to check for 3? Well, I can figure out that 144 is divisible by 3 because if you add the separate integers, 1 plus 4 plus 4, that equals 9. If this number is divisible by 3, it means the original number was divisible by 3. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try that. So 3 into 144. Ooh, I'm feeling good about this one. So I'm going to put a 3 and a 48, and then I'm going to check. So 1x times 3 is 3. 1x times 48 is 48. And then I add those up, and I get a 51. Check. Quick. Easy. Do you remember how to write the final answer? Put those parentheses around. Hug it out. And make sure that we remember that because this was plus and this was plus, the interior signs of our binomials will be plus as well. There's our final answer. How about number three? Are you starting to get the hang of it? Even if you know the answer, try that crisscross method because we're going to use it as we get into things that are much more difficult. So we want you practicing it on the small stuff so you're ready for the big stuff. On this one, I purposefully went ahead and got one that wasn't the correct answer because I want you really focusing in on the fact that we should be checking each time. So 8 times 5 didn't work. It gave me 13. So I just drew a line, said no, and I started over again. And then, of course, 4 times 10 does add to be 14. So that was our final answer. Let's keep this up. So in this next scenario, we have ax squared minus bx plus c. Okay, so now the bx, that middle term, is negative and that c is still positive. So how are we going to add to a negative and multiply to a positive? Well, we'd have to choose factors that are both negative so that they're multiplying to a positive and still adding to a negative. 
Okay, so this one we have x squared minus 11x plus 30. So to get x squared, obviously we're gonna choose one x and one x, and then to multiply to 30, we have a few choices, but we wanna add to negative 11. So I'm gonna need to make sure I make a minus and a minus, so it's still gonna multiply to a positive 30. We could do five and six. Would five and six add to negative 11 if they were both negative? I think they would. So I could choose negative five or minus five and minus six. Notice how I wrote that as a minus five and a minus six here. So then when I do my crisscross method, right, I'm gonna get negative five and negative six and I can add those together and I do indeed get negative 11. So it checks out. So making sure we're writing it in factored form. So here's one of my factors and here's the others. Don't let the minus sign screw you up. Since we wrote it in our crisscross method, we can just copy x minus five times x minus six as our factored form. No problem. Let's take a look at five. This one, okay, I've got my one x and one x for x squared, multiplies to 45, and I want it to add to a negative 18. So I'm gonna want them to both be negative again so that they multiply to a positive 45. Okay, the two that come to mind right away for me in 45 are like, what, nine and five? And then if I use crisscross method, it looks like I get negative 5x, negative 9x. Those add to a negative 14. Bummer. So this actually didn't check out. I want a negative 18. Okay, take two. Let's do, okay, 1x and 1x still. What else multiplies to 45? Well, 3 and 15, 3, 15. I think that would work. Okay, crisscross. Looks like negative 15, negative 3x, adds to, thank goodness, negative 18. So that one worked out. So make sure we write it in our factored form, x minus 15, x minus three. So even if it doesn't work the first time, we can just try a different two factors and check, like we did here. Go try six. I got x minus nine times x minus eight as my factored form. If you got x minus eight times x minus nine, those are equivalent, right? Here's another situation. Notice this time we have ax squared plus bx minus c. So c is negative. What is that gonna do to our factors, the two binomials that we write? Well, if I need to multiply to be a negative, that means one is positive, one is negative. Seems simple. There's one more connection we can make though. If b is positive, then I would want to make the larger factor or the larger product positive. Let's do number seven. Same process, 1x squared, so 1x times 1x, and we have factors for negative 72. I'm just gonna throw it out there, two and 36. And then what was the rule? If b is positive, the larger product is gonna be positive. So I'm gonna make that 36 positive and the two negative. When I do crisscross, I have negative two, positive 36. Oh, that's 34, no go. Let's try another set. I think I got it, eight and nine. 1x, 8, 1x, 9. Which one's positive? The larger product. So boom. Oh shoot, I don't even have to finish this one and this didn't work out. Shoot, what could it be? 8 and 9, 2 and 36. That looks like it is going to work. 4 times 18. Alrighty, let's try that one. 1x and 4. 1x and 18. Which one's positive, the larger product, and then we get the 14 that we wanted. Thank goodness. All right, how do we write that? Remember to hug it out now, hug it out. Don't mix those up. So I have x minus four and x plus 18. By the way, what if someone wrote it the other way around? Are they wrong? No, they're not wrong. How do we know? Well, commutative property of multiplication. Hmm, seems like we learned that. Yes, all right. Look at the next one. What do you think? Can you do it faster than I can do it? Let's race. Okay, x minus three, x plus 12, and it could be written as x plus 12, x minus three. Okay, now, don't say you beat me if you started before I started though, right? Okay, what about this last one? 57 is our C value. I like 57. Doesn't it look prime? I always think it looks prime, just like 51 looks prime, but it's not prime. We know it's not divisible by two because it's not even, but what about three? Well, let's check. Five plus seven is 12. 12 is divisible by three, therefore 57 is divisible by three. So three into 57, three times 19 is 57. I got it. Wanna race now? Yep, we got it. X minus three, X plus 19. 
Let's look at this last situation. This one, we still have a negative C right here, but now the B also is going to be negative. So that means we're gonna want our two factors to add to a negative this time instead of add to a positive like the last example. So what that would do is when I figure out what my two factors need to be, I'm gonna want the larger product to be negative. That way when they're added together, it's still a negative sum. So here we go. Um, multiplies to negative 72 and then I'm adding to negative 34. Well, my instinct with 72 is to immediately think eight and nine because those are ones we know right off hand, but eight and nine are nowhere near 34. So I'm gonna try to find a number a little bit closer to 34, like um, 36 and two. 36 times two is 72 and then those could add somehow to a 34. So I'm gonna have my 36 and two, okay. I, I know one of them needs to be positive, one of them needs to be negative, and I want that middle term to be negative. So I need my largest product, so my 36, to be negative and my smaller one to be positive. That way they still multiply to a negative and add to a negative. Let's check to see if this actually works though. Criss, cross, add those together, I get negative 34x. So it does work. So I've got one factor, the other factor, let's make sure we write it in the correct format. X minus 36 times X plus two. Sweet. Okay, why don't you go try the next two with this? Let's check and see how you did. I got X plus four, X minus nine for number 11. And then 12, I got X minus 17, X plus three. Let's review greatest common factor. So that's the largest common factor of all terms in the expression. We'll just do a couple to get your brain back in the game. So what if I had 40X squared plus 5X? Well, that would be equivalent to, let's see, 40 and five, I can pull a five out, X squared and X, I can pull an X out. So if I factor out an X, do you remember that way back when we were in the woods? Factor, factor, factor. Okay, we factor out. So 5X times what is 40X squared? Well, 5X times 8X. And then, oh, 5X and 5X, boom, it disappears. No, it doesn't. Okay, we need 5, 8X plus what? 5X times what equals 5X? One. I gotta say, that's one of those common mistakes. People like go, oh, it disappeared. Nope, mark the spot. Okay, another one. What if we had 39x plus 36? Well, the only common factor there is a three. Both 39 and 36 are divisible by three. So I can rewrite this expression as three, factor out the three, times, ooh, 13x plus 12. Okay, do you remember that now? Let's look at our next thing. We're going to find the GCF and factor completely. This is a great time to start with start strong, finish strong, because trust me, we're moving on to stuff that's gonna be way bigger. So if we get these ideas in our head now, it's gonna be so much easier. Start strong, that means find the GCF, and then finish strong. Is it fully factored? Look carefully. On number 13, we have 6n squared plus 9n. What's the GCF? Yep, 3n. So go ahead and factor out a 3n. Also, get used to that word, right? Factor. 3n times 2n would be 6n squared, and 3n times 3 would be 9n. There's our factored form. Now, is that fully factored? Yes, it is. 3n, n to the first power, 2n plus 3, n to the first power. Let's look at number 14. Ooh, our trinomial, three terms. This time, we can factor out a 4. So let's factor that out. We get x squared plus 5x minus, what do we get, what do we get? 14, yep, 14. Now, here's an example of we started strong, found the GCF, but have we finished strong? No, we haven't finished strong because x squared minus 5x, or excuse me, plus 5x minus 14 still factors. So let's go ahead to our crisscross method, find those factors, but other thing, don't lose the four. Four is part of the original expression. We need that in our final answer. So I'm going to do kind of a side note over here. X squared plus five X minus 14, one X, one X, who factors? 14 is negative. Okay, 14 is negative, C is negative. So I know I need a plus minus. B is positive. What does that mean? The bigger product has to be positive. So I'm gonna use two and seven and this would be the larger product and it needs to be positive for me to get a positive 5x in the middle. And sure enough, 
we see that this works. Let's finish factoring, finish strong. So we have our four, that's from starting strong. And then this factors into two binomials, x minus two, x plus seven. If you find yourself ever making this mistake, always throw those parentheses around the crisscross method so that you don't accidentally go crisscross on your final answer. Okay, number 15, what are we gonna do if a is a negative one, meaning that coefficient in front of the x squared is negative? Well, let's just start strong. Let's take out a GCF. Let's take out a negative one. Have you finished strong? Nope. Let's finish strong. Side note that x squared minus 13x plus 12, one, one. Okay, C is positive. So that means both signs are pluses or both signs are minuses. But B is negative. It's a negative 13x. So I know that they're both minuses. So I'm going to use a negative 12 and a negative 1, and boom, I've got that factorization all figured out like a pro. Negative 1, parentheses, x minus 12, x minus 1. Now it's time for you to do a pop quiz. Try and take this really seriously, like pause the video, do the 3, and then grade yourself. Wait a minute, these are equations. So we have standard form and then we're gonna write our factored form. It's no big deal though, we're just gonna write our factors with y equals in front. Okay, let's check our solutions. So for A, I've got y equals, right? Cause it started with a y equals in the standard form. So I need to make sure my factored form has y equals. Y equals x minus seven, x plus four. Then for B, I got y equals x plus 12, x plus one. Okay, cause I have that positive C and that positive in the middle. And then y equals x minus six, x plus seven for the last one, C. That was a great lesson on factoring. Are we done? Yes, we finished our lesson. Can we? Okay, let's go run some baseball stats. Woo!